Chamel Lane and I'm here with a new edition of Sketch to Scrapbook page and today's sketch uses three square photos. I've cut mine to three inches square and then the whole idea of today's sketch is that it's to create a layered banner across your page. So for this I'm using um, things that are left in my February picks for Best of Both Worlds and that includes the 12x12 Studio Calico background which I've been saving because I knew I wanted to use that um, diagonal chevron as a full 12x12 and then I've started my banner here. I'm using three large elements on the banner. One type of element is a journaling card and that's from this sheet that I've been cutting apart the whole time. So I've used three of those and um, this one, one that has space for journaling in a frame and then one with numbers and lines. I've also cut two large paper tags from another pattern paper in the collection and then three square photos. So these are the photos that I've cut to three inches square and I've just threaded everything here along a piece of baker's twine and I wanted to show you this idea today because I've had a few requests for people asking what could I do with eyelets and I'll tell you the truth why I've never done like a whole video on eyelets or anything like that is because I don't use them very often at all. This is the only instance that I really use them anymore and I am um, I donated the, my whole collection of eyelets almost um, several years ago and the only thing I have left is one tiny little packet that just has neutrals. So I just have black, white, gray, and I think there's silver in there. That's all I still have, so a tiny, tiny little packet. They're not my favorite embellishment. I much prefer brads and things um, like that or enamel dots for something that would just create a small round embellishment on the page. So the only time I tend to use eyelets is when I want to add a little detail to stringing something along and that's just what I would use with a banner. So I've done all of these already. I'm just going to do one last one to show you that process. So I'm using um, a crocodile the smaller hole punch to punch a hole in either the corner or the center of each piece. Then thread my eyelet through. Try that again. Had the paper stuck in the middle. And then with the crocodile, um, it tells you which uh, which way is the top and the base of the eyelet. So you just do it in the same direction that it tells you. One quick squeeze and it's all set. So nice and easy. But I'm sure most of you already have one of those and know how that works. But just wanted to show you one in case it was something new to you. So now I have all my large elements from the sketch cut out. The edges are all inked to match and they're all strung along one length of baker's twine. Now what I want to do is make sure I have plenty of excess baker's twine off both sides so that I have a bit of freedom. So I'll now, I can now trim that so that I don't have to deal with the spool while I'm trying to get everything arranged. And then I can take all these pieces and get the large elements of the banner spread across the page how I want them to go. And I do cheat a little bit and I'll adhere just lightly but I will adhere the large elements to the page. So I want there to be a little bit of a curve to the banner and then I'll start bringing the different pieces along the way. I'll just get them all evenly, well, sort of evenly spread out. And this just takes a little bit of shaking the whole line until it all falls into the right place. So here's everything kind of lined up and basically I wanted to try adding things that were quite large that would really fill the page because I've used this technique before but I've always done it on a smaller scale. So I've used smaller and narrower specifically items across the banner. So I'm not sure at this point if I like the larger or the smaller but sometimes when I'm trying something for a sketch video I tend to think that if I give it a try then you can decide when you watch it if it's something you like or you dislike and then you don't have to go through the pain of uh, giving it a try and seeing if you like the end result. So we'll see how I uh, 
how I like the end uh, layout with the larger elements. And then if you think that it looks too bulky and, and packed at the end of the page, then take everything down to a smaller scale. Use smaller photos, smaller tags, and you'll have a lot more room on your page. And on my blog, I'll try and link up a few additional layouts in this style. So you can see, even though they're not specifically from the sketch, you can see some different examples. Now, at this point, I really want to bring in some smaller size elements. And there's two ways I'm going to do that. One is with punched heart shapes. That's the same punch that I've been using. It's the Martha Stewart heart punch. And then the other is with some washi tape. Now, I'm not going to use eyelets with either of these. With the small elements and with the punches, I'm going to staple them on. So I'm just going to pop the heart over the, or under the twine and staple onto the twine and then I can string those along here and there this is the tiny attacher which does really little staples but of course if you only have a normal stapler you could use that just go the other direction probably so that you'll have enough room for the staple to fit on the punched heart and with washi tape I'm just going to take a length and tear it and then pull it over the tape or under the tape as it were fold in half and then I just crease the ends in the center and cut to get the little banner edge so we'll do a few of those as well just to have a little bit of something smaller along the banner. It gives you that variety and really emphasizes the layering. To tidy up the ends of the string, I just looped it back around and tied a bow with the excess at the sides and then used the tiny attacher to staple it over the top and then went on to my title. Now, when I originally looked at this sketch, with a plainer background, I was really imagining that this smaller writing would all be handwritten. But this is a difficult um, pattern paper for handwriting, so I decided it needed to be all something that would stand out a bit more, something like letter stickers, and then my journaling would go on these cards rather than on the background paper. And I had enough of the white wood grain thickers to spell out the large words in my title, but I didn't have something for the smaller words, and I really didn't want to bring in red into this color scheme at this point. I, I wanted to keep it to the tones that I already had here. So in this case, I am cheating a little bit and went to my stash and had um, some older Cosmo Cricut turquoise tiny type stickers. So I used those to spell out the smaller words in the title. And both of these titles did something that I really like, which is where you have the ascending letters, the letters that are taller, gives you little spots that you can fit in the you can fit the smaller lettering into those spaces that are made by this. So it's like this L frames the the full wording here, almost as if you can imagine an imaginary line that goes from the top of the L back to the start and you have it all boxed in together. It even worked out well that these three letters fit right in between the dot and the I and the top of the L. And then I could do the same thing here by spelling backward from the D to the I. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in my journaling and then I can come back and add in any little final embellishments that I might want to dress it up a little bit more. With a large banner, it meant that my side cards are going off the edge of the page. So I went ahead and trimmed those before I added the writing so that I knew I wouldn't end up chopping my words in half. And I haven't added the date anywhere. So I have a date sticker left here. And I had a couple options. I thought I could hang this along the banner, but I'm not completely convinced of any spot where it would go really well and not look a little bit awkward. But it does fit magically in this spot here. So I think that's where I'll put the date, even though that's a little bit different to what I would normally use. I kind of like 
little difference there. Another option would be to do a little bit of embellishment at the top of the page, even in the center. It could go either side or the center, depending on what ends up in your banner. And if it ends up a little weighted to one side or the other, you could balance that by doing a small cluster of embellishments at the top of the page. Um, but I think for now I'll just do this section here. And then I wanted to add a little something above the title because I feel like it's a little bit heavy toward the bottom of the page. Maybe I should have started it up a little higher so it was a, just a little bit more central. But I think I can fix that by adding just something really, really simple here. And I had punched more of these hearts than I used, so I just turned them over to the other pattern. And I have three with pop dots on the back to just line up right above the title. And that changes the weight of the whole um, unit. And perhaps it's still a little bit too low on the page. And in hindsight, I should have moved everything up. But I'm, I'm quite happy with it here. I'm going to add in the date. And then I think that will be done for this page. So that's everything finished for my version of this page. You can see the difference from the sketch. And if you want to bring everything in smaller, then start with smaller photos and make the paper elements in your uh, banner a little bit smaller as well. And then it will fit without as much overlap and you'll have um, a, a little bit more delicate banner rather than one that's quite so big on the page. It just depends on what look you like. And there's a second version of this page to be found on the blog and that's by guest designer Julie Kirk. So you can stop by and check that out as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'd love to see what you make from this sketch.